Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the world's fastest organism that seems to also use the world's smallest propeller in order to create all of the necessary speed. And specifically this relatively recent study that you can find in the description below that determined how this particular component or this propeller is actually made. But more specifically, we're going to be discussing the organism itself and how it's able to achieve such speeds and why it's able to move so fast. But I guess before we start, let's start with some of the misconceptions we have in regards to some of the fastest organisms on the planet. Normally, most textbooks and most internet searches will mention cheetah as being the fastest animal on the planet. And to some extent, it is true for land mammals. Although when it comes to speed itself, the cheetah is usually beat by a typical bird. And the fastest bird in this case being the so-called peregrine falcon. These birds can actually reach speeds up to about 400 km per hour. But in this case, it might be actually a little bit unfair or a little bit unrealistic to measure the speed in km per hour, meters per second, miles per hour, or so on. A much more realistic and more fair way of measuring speed across various organisms is to actually measure what's known as the body length per second. In other words, for cheetah, for example, it's currently covering approximately 20 body lengths every single second. We obviously are talking about this length right here. And in that sense, cheetah is really not that fast at all. Most of the bugs, most of the insects, will usually move much, much faster than a typical mammal. And when it comes to the fastest such organism, it has to be this right here. This tiny mite known as Paratarsertomus macrolapsis. It can generally reach speeds of nearly 300 body lengths per second. But, turns out, even this right here is not a record holder, because there is something even faster and even smaller in terms of size. And here we have to descend down into the kingdom of bacteria and archaea. And when it comes to these tiny creatures, they can actually move extremely fast. And for typical bacteria, they'll normally use what's known as flagella. It's this long protrusion you see from this particular bacterium, known as chlamydomonas. And generally, flagella can actually be arranged in a lot of different ways and create motion using a variety of different techniques, but it typically moves like a propeller that you see on the left. Some of the more advanced cells will sometimes have something known as cilia that, that does work slightly differently. It sort of moves back and forth like an oar that you see on the right. And in many cases, like inside our bodies, cilia have actually even evolved to not move the cells, but to move things that are passing through a certain region. This is an example of cilia located in a part of our lungs. And normally this is used to, for example, clean the lungs or to maintain certain types of environment inside a certain organ. But these particular techniques in terms of motion are relatively new evolutionary speaking. Something else existed before that in some of the most ancient bacteria known as archaea. But here I guess it's also important to make a slight clarification. Archaea is not necessarily the same as bacteria. Archaea are extremely ancient. As a matter of fact, even though bacteria today is generally responsible for some sort of a problem or disease in some other organism, archaea are so ancient that they generally don't even have the ability to cause any disease in anything. They normally function in a completely different way from a typical bacteria. These here were most likely the first organisms on planet Earth. And certain archaea living in some of the most extreme conditions on the planet have developed some of the most unique and most extreme ways of surviving in these places. One such way is an ability to move extremely fast. Faster than anything else on the planet. And in this case, the record right now is with this unusual archaeum you see right here, referred to by its scientific name as Methencaldococcus velosus, with the structure that you see on the right responsible for its extreme velocities. Over 500 body lengths per second, making this the fastest organism on planet Earth. And this particular spiral-shaped filament is referred to as archelum, a structure that to some extent resembles a typical propeller on a boat, and it does function in a very similar way. It essentially spins super super fast, spinning this entire structure which then acts as a kind of a corkscrew. And to date, this seems to be the only known structure for archaea or for these ancient bacteria in order to generate their motility or the ability to move. And there doesn't seem to be any other organism except for certain archaea that possess these particular structures. 
with a recent paper discovering that it's mostly made up of two different filaments that you can sort of see marked as B1 and B2 that create the rotation motion with this part of the bacterium acting as a sort of a motor that spins the entire structure. But I guess the question here is why? Why does this organism need to move so fast? There are quite a lot of archaea all over the place. There are even some inside you right now. We all possess a lot of archaea living inside our guts. And generally most of them move really slow, if at all. Some of them live completely still without any motion. But not this one. So what's going on here? Well, it's really all to do with where it lives and what it needs to do to survive. This bacterium can only be found in some of the most extreme conditions near the underwater volcanoes, specifically off the coast of Iceland. And here the temperatures can be really high, as high as 80 degrees Celsius on average. But because of these extreme conditions, here the temperature variation can be also just as extreme. In just approximately one inch of water, you can actually have temperature changes of over 50 degrees. It can be 80 degrees on the left, but can be like hundreds and hundreds of degrees on the right. Which means that if anything wants to survive here, it needs to be able to relocate from one place to another really, really fast. And it's believed that this is exactly why these particular bacteria or archaea evolved an ability to relocate from one place to another very, very fast. And it actually makes sense because these scientists have also observed that they seem to have two major ways of moving. They either move extremely fast in a straight line or more often will just exhibit a slow kind of a zigzagish movement all over the place. Which is most likely related to the temperature and of course the nutrients in the system. If they have to eat, they'll start zigzagging. If they have to run away, they'll start moving in a straight line. And because the optimal growth temperature for this bacterium is approximately 80 degrees Celsius, they'll usually try to seek this particular temperature and try to get as much methane, which they use for food, from this location as possible. With the differences in motion also obviously used for other reasons. For example, they'll start zigzagging if they want to find a place to attach themselves to and to stay near some kind of a safe environment. Whereas once again, they'll start moving in a straight line but extremely fast if they experience some danger. With this paper also discovering that apparently Archaeum is way more complex than we initially thought. It seems to contain a lot more components and it seems to have evolved to be very, very efficient. And so to some extent, it is a little bit surprising that nothing like this seems to exist in other bacteria, more recent bacteria, and doesn't exist in any of the more complex cells like eukaryotic cells that we are made out of. This is only unique to certain archaea and doesn't exist anywhere else. But because this is essentially the most efficient and the smallest propeller on the planet, it's sort of important for the scientists to figure out how all of this works and if anything like this can ever be used for some kind of a practical purpose. For example, the scientists could one day develop some kind of a drug delivery system by using this technique and using these unusual propellers. Something that could be done extremely fast and much more efficient than ever before. But I guess for now, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in this video. It's definitely the fastest organism by body length per second, and it's definitely one of the more mysterious and more unusual organisms out there. But I'm sure we're going to learn so much more about archaea in some of the future studies, especially because they are generally very important. As I mentioned, there are quite a lot of archaea living inside of us, and we still barely understand what they actually do inside our bodies. And for this reason, these studies are very, very important just to help us understand what's actually going on and how we can use this to possibly become healthier or live longer, happier lives. And on this note, well, that's pretty much it. But also check out this relatively recent video about the microcosm living inside of us and why it's so important for some of the modern studies, especially when it comes to health. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And also check out some of the charities I'm currently supporting, and the reasons for these charities in one of the videos below. Thank you, I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.